Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the ultimate guide for self-taught designers part Two. Part 1 already is on the channel but these two parts are not connected together so don't worry you can watch them at any part of time. Now part 2 is heavily updated because now we have aspects like AI, design clients and studios changing things up. I'm going to be sharing a lot of cool resources, courses, material etc that you can refer to also during the video so make sure you watch till the end. Alright so the number one aspect that self-taught designers are talking a lot about these days is how AI is going to be useful for design like us. AI will now be a part of your workflow. So start focusing on AI workflows, creating AI workflows. And what I mean by that is very simple. Now you have a design thinking process, you're learning design thinking process. You can now replace certain tasks or steps which you feel are repetitive in nature, which you're going to be doing again and again, but are boring, are not using a lot of your brain's power. It's just repetitive tasks that you have to type thing or you need to find or search for something. Tools like ChatGPT and Google Gemini and other tools like that, you are cutting your research, your ideation, your wireframing time by hours, maybe sometimes even days. So repetitive tasks which would take two hours would now take say 20 minutes or 10 minutes. A good way to start replacing workflows is to go to a platform called Taft or there's an AI for that. This is a platform with thousands of tools, assets, resources, which will help you replace certain tasks with AI. So if I search for something like UX research, it is going to find tools which are connected to that term. So for example, UX Sniff, Website Insight for Improved User Experience, is a tool that even I did not know about, to be honest. And this is a tool that is highly ranked on this website. It is verified and rated by users here. And you can then start using this tool. You can do this for anything on this website. This is a really cool resource for everyone. And no, AI is not going to replace you as a designer. Stop saying that all the time. I'm sure there are going to be a couple of comments down below. Take that out of your head and start doing the smarter thing and that is to incorporate it into your life. The second very helpful thing for self-taught designers, checking out the entry point of a UX design career for different people. So everyone has a different life story. Some of you might be in design college or graduated from design college. Maybe you're in a boot camp, or maybe you're a self-taught designer, or maybe you're in a different city where there's not a lot of tech, etc. The entry point for you can be different from someone else. So first of all, just stop comparing your journey with someone else. I know a lot of you guys might do that, trying to figure out how someone else did it is not always very useful. So you have to follow the three A's in this case, ability, availability, and affordability. Three things that I'm going to put on screen. Uh, availability is whether you want to go to the office, whether you want to do something from home, whether you want to shift cities or countries altogether, or if you're available only for six hours a week, part-time, full-time, you have to figure all that stuff out, your availability first. Ability, of course, everyone has a slightly different ability. It could be how long you have been in the field or how far back did you start practicing UX design or did you do internships, etc. So your ability around design and the experience you have can vary. I would suggest give yourself a score out of 10 if you feel you're a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, which I think everyone should. Uh, if you have that kind of confidence or if you have that kind of ability and skill set, then you should target something which is higher in a metro city with a bigger company. Whereas if you feel you're just getting started and your ability is not there yet, I would suggest starting as an intern, an associate, or as a small junior designer in a small scale startup. Small scale startups are easier to connect with. So you can connect with the CEOs, you can connect with CTOs directly because they're very small. In most cases, number one, they can pay. So you're not in a bad situation where it comes to money. Uh, the growth potential can be large if the company is in a growing phase you might become a leader of design in three years. Crazy stuff, but that is possible. Uh, you can, of course, build a bigger network being in a startup. You're working with other startups. You're probably in an incubator or in a co-working space. You are able to learn more initially and you're able to 
target bigger things in the future. Now to get into say a larger company, either climb the ladder from a startup or you have to have a very good solid network of people that you already know. I'll come to how to build a network later during this video. Apart from that, also please focus getting in as an intern in these larger companies or getting in as associates in these larger companies. Associates are basically glorified interns. If I had to put it in layman terms, you can even start off uh, networking with the people that work there. And that is the easiest way to kind of get a reference from them. Now let's come to the third point, which I've already kind of touched on is the networking and the community building aspect of it. Five years ago, didn't matter that much. Now matters way too much than you think. Now there are some really fantastic communities out there. There's Design Wings UX. Uh, UI school. Then, of course, there is Design Air, which are people who we work with as well. And they have tens of thousands of designers who've joined in. Imagine the power of tens of thousands of designers, some even experienced people, on your fingertips. As someone who is in a competitive atmosphere like UX design, your superpower is not your degree, is not the kind of mentors you have, or not the kind of credentials you can present, but also the kind of community that you're a part of or the kind of network that you're able to build. I know so many people who've built net thousands of peoples of network uh, just by sharing their learnings, not even experience stuff, basic learnings that they're learning as a student or as a designer. So what is stopping you, maybe someone who's already an expert or who has already done self-taught UX design? I'll have some links to some cool communities, free communities out there. Join it, become active, share your work, get feedback, and even reach out to people who are in other companies. Um, remember, they're being bombarded by hundreds of messages every month uh, to asking them for a job. So make sure you approach them in a more personal, connected manner. That is the power of a network. People in your network, you'll know, okay? You'll know what their work is, etc. But people, general people are just messaging you for a job or reference, you don't know them. And probably there's a high chance you won't get a reference from them. Take this into accountability that you're doing the deeds before getting to that network. You're growing in that network and you're actually gaining respect there. I also suggest, highly suggest go to physical events. Physical events are gonna be super useful on more one-on-one -on -one stuff learning from some experts and also just in general getting popular on linkedin instagram share the events that you're going to people are going to like that people are going to follow you people might even help you out with things in the future let's talk about design tools something that you might be on your mind already design tools is very surface level now five years ago as i said becoming an expert at figma was unique was different now becoming an expert at Figma, everyone has a Figma certificate. Everyone has learned how design, how auto layout works, smart, <laughs> smart animations work, how different kind of UI elements work. Everyone basically knows that by now. Don't expect the base level or the surface level things to work now as they used to do in the, in the past. Now, here is where something special comes in. Learning niche aspects of design tools can be helpful. Now, if you're a Figma person, you love Figma, you use Figma, you're an expert at it. Do you know every aspect of design systems and creating design tokens inside Figma? Do you know dev mode very well in Figma? Learn design systems, learn aspects of Figma that other people don't always talk about. Learn atomic designs. Learn everything that is around design systems and how it works with Figma because that is more valuable to a company than just a, just learning a tool. The same thing works with FigJam, same thing works with Miro, Maze, all these cool tools where you're focusing on the tasks you can do with them, the unique niche tasks which are now becoming more popular, more valuable like design systems were and you can learn those tasks around that and just use a tool as a base or as a surface level aspect and all the other niches under that as important valuable things. I'll have one or two courses I feel are really cool for learning design systems, etc. in all these tools, again, in the description. The next one is actually highly in demand with the industry right now, with companies and organizations. Number one is to understand what companies are exactly looking for with a closer view in their demands of skill sets, etc. There are so many people talking about 
what works and what doesn't inside a company just search for design recruiter of google or design recruiter of microsoft you'll get hundreds of videos of different design recruiters talking about what they are looking out for in resumes portfolios their skill sets etc check that out you're checking the source of who is hiring you instead of what is needed for the industry you are checking out what companies need at this current moment instead of what the news or the media will tell you so things like specializations the skills that are required the culture that is required for you to fit into or to for you to adapt things like ability to negotiate with clients and being expert at jira there are so many requirements that a company might have that might not be taught in design school that might not be taught in colleges these are things that you can always practice on the side another aspect of companies is being passionate about the industries that you are getting into if you're someone who is passionate about the medic medicare or the medical industry as such you will fit in well with medical startups with uh, i don't know medicine delivery companies with healthcare saas products there are so many things around healthcare you can mark hundreds of different roles jobs companies that you can find on a daily basis around healthcare and because of that you can be passionate about that industry as a such learn more about it learn more about the companies you're interviewing for or the their products that they're making the services that they're providing and then finally being able to ace interviews with them because you know so much about the industry that they are impressed that you'll fit in quicker okay the next one is a personal favorite because there's something that i've done and there's something i always tell people to do and that is create content around your current workflow i'm not saying create content on knowledge on expertise no maybe you're a beginner you don't have that expertise you can share or you're nervous about it in that case you can always share your work in progress share a notebook where you're taking notes on a project or you're creating a flow chart for say user flows in a notebook or in a chart and you have different things on your table take a nice aesthetic photo put it on ig put it on linkedin put it on twitter and you're going to get hundreds of likes on it not just hundreds of likes these are hundreds of people in your network you have acquired because they can see the value that you uphold and this can indirectly help you out in other aspects that i'm talking about now sharing initially you might not get as many likes comments etc but just be at it be consistent post twice or thrice a week or maybe once a week at least and that's going to get you so much more eyeballs and those eyeballs can lead to something good something valuable for you in your future great talking to you guys one on one like this whatever if you did like this video just give it a thumbs up man it helps a lot it helps me understand what you guys like what you don't subscribe to the channel you also click the bell icon so that you're notified whenever i post if i'm posting something valuable you might miss it why miss it right just click on the little bell icon also and you're going to get all my notifications awesome so i'll see you next week take care until next time god bless